welcome back. I'm so glad you're here for our third Making Meaning lesson this week. My name is Ms. Mogelson, and in our last lesson, we read the book The Name Jar by Yan Suk Choi. While we were reading, we noticed what we wondered and what questions we had about the text. Today, we're going to reread the name jar and think about some of the questions that we asked last time. After I reread the book to you, we're going to think about how some of our questions and our wonderings were explained. Here are some of the questions that I'd like you to think about as I read to you again today. I wonder if anyone will say her name right. Why did the kids in her class make a name jar? Will Yoon Hae pick a new name from the name jar? And will Yoon Hae decide to keep her Korean name? Some of the explanations to these questions and wonderings won't be right there in the book as we, you are listening today. Instead, for some of our questions, you'll need to listen for clues that are in the book that will help you answer the questions. Please keep those questions in your mind as we reread the name jar. The Name Jar by Yan Suk Choi, published by Dragonfly Books. The Name Jar. Through the school bus window, Yoon Hae looked out at the strange buildings and houses on the way to her new school. It was her first day, but she was both nervous and excited. Is that thing for show and tell? A boy asked Yoon Hae, surprising her. Yoon Hae looked up as more kids leaned over. Uh, no, it's mine, Yoon Hae answered, quickly putting the pouch back in her pocket. Are you new here? What's your name? A girl asked. Yoon Hae, said Yoon Hae. Ooh, nay, the girl asked, scrunching up her face. Ooh, 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 nay. Some of the kids chanted. No, no, Yunhei corrected. It's spelled U-N-H-E-I. It's pronounced Yunhei. Oh, it's yu hey, said the boy. Like, you hey. What about hey you? Just then, the bus pulled up to the school and the doors opened. Yunhei hurried to get off. yu hey, bye-bye, the kids yelled as she left. Yoon Hae felt herself blush. Yoon Hae stood in the doorway of her new and noisy classroom. She was relieved that the kids on the bus had gone to other rooms, but still her face felt red. Aren't you going in? Asked a curly haired boy with lots of dots on his face. You're the new girl, right? He asked cheerfully. Yoon Hae nodded and before she could walk away, the boy took her hand and pulled her through the door. Here comes the new girl, he announced so loudly that the teacher, Mr. Kokoktos, almost dropped his glasses. Mr. Kokoktos thanked him and greeted Yoon Hae. Please come welcome our newest, newest student, he said to the class. She and her family just arrived from Korea last week. Yoon Hae smiled broadly and tried not to show her nervousness. What's your name? Someone shouted. Yoon Hae pictured the kids on the bus. Um, I haven't picked one yet, she told the class, but I'll let you know by next week. As Mr. Kokoktos showed her to her desk, she felt many round, curious eyes on her. Why doesn't she have a name? She heard someone whisper. Maybe she robbed a bank in Korea and needs a new identity, a boy replied. On the bus ride home, nobody teased her. But Yoon Hae kept thinking about her name. How was school, Yoon Hae? Her mother asked her when she walked in. Did you understand the teacher? Yoon Hae simply nodded. She unpacked her school bag and set the red pouch by a photograph of her grandma. I'm glad you're learning English well, her mother said. You must study hard, behave nicely, and get good grades to show you're a good Korean. I will, 
replied Yunhei, but, but I think I would like my own American name, she said quickly. Her mother looked at her with surprise. Why? Yunhei is a beautiful name. Your grandma and I went to a name master for it. But it's so hard to pronounce, Yunhei explained. I don't want to be different from all the American kids. You are different, Yunhei, her mother said. That's a good thing. Yunhei just wrinkled her nose. Later that day, Yunhei and her mother went grocery shopping in their new neighborhood. They passed uh, Fadil's Falafel, Tony's Pizza, and Dot's Deli. A big graffiti-painted garbage truck roared like a lion as it took off down the street. Nothing sounded or looked familiar until they got to Kim's Market. The sign was both in English and Korean. Her mother picked up cabbage to make kimchi, Korean-styled spicy pickled cabbage, and other vegetables and meat. She also found some seaweed, Yoonhae's favorite, for soup. It made Yoonhae smile. Just because we've moved to America, her mother said, doesn't mean we have to stop eating Korean food. At the checkout counter, a friendly man smiled at Yoonhae. Helping your mother with the shopping, he asked. Yoonhae nodded. I'm Mr. Kim, he said. And what is your name? Yunhei, she answered. Ah, what a beautiful name, he said. Doesn't it mean grace? Yunhei nodded again. My mother and grandmother went to a name master for it, she told him. A graceful name for a graceful girl, Mr. Kim said as he put their grocery bags, uh, groceries into their bags. Welcome to the neighborhood, Yunhei. That evening, Yunhei stood in front of the bathroom mirror. Hi, my name is Amanda, she said cheerfully. Then she wrinkled her nose. Hi, my name is Laura. Hmm, maybe not. Her smile turned down. Nothing sounded right. Nothing felt right. I don't think American kids will like me, she worried as she began to brush her teeth. Ha he wa nam ishuhi, she said to the mirror with her mouth full of toothpaste. The next morning, when Yoon Hae arrived at school, she found a glass jar on her desk with some pieces of paper in it. Yoon Hae took one out and read it aloud. Daisy, that's my baby sister's nickname, but she said you can use it if you want, said Cindy, who sat next to her. Yoon Hae took out the rest of the paper. Tamala, she read. I got it from a storybook, said Nate. She was smart and brave. Yunhei nodded and unfolded another piece. Wednesday? Yeah, you came here on a Wednesday, said Ralph. Thank you for your help, a smile spread over Yunhei's face. Ralph quickly said, we'll put more names in. You can pick whatever you like or pick them all and you'll have the longest name in history. It was three o'clock and the bell rang for the end of the school day. Yunhei looked out the window and saw that it was sprinkling. It's the same rain, she thought, but in a different place. She watched the other kids leaving in groups. Hey, a familiar voice called out to her. Yunhei turned around to see the curly haired boy again. I'm Joey, he said. And you? Don't you have any name? Yunhei thought for a moment. Well, I can show you, she said, and she took out the small red pouch. She pressed the wooden block on the ink pad and stamped it on a piece of paper. This is my name stamp, she said. My grandma gave it to me. In Korea, I can use it as my signature when I open a bank account or write a letter. And I, whenever I miss my grandma, I use it to fill a piece of paper. Want to try it? She offered the stamp to Joey, and he carefully inked the stamp she, uh, and pressed it hard on the paper. The red characters gleamed against the whiteness. Wow, that's beautiful, Joey said. Can I keep the paper? Sure, Yoon-hae said. 
and then the two of them shared her umbrella as they walked to the school bus. Every day the jar got fuller with more names and Yoon Hae read them all. She found a few names she liked, like Miranda, Stella, Avery. They sounded interesting. I hope you choose the name I put in, Marco told her at snack time. I've put in three more, said Ralph. Madison, Park, and Lex. They're my favorite street names. Maybe you should close your eyes and draw a name, Rosie suggested. Ralph frowned. That's silly. What if she doesn't like the name she draws? Well, we didn't get to choose any of our names when we were born, did we? Rosie argued. No one thought about this. When Yu Hei got home from school that day, her little brother ran to give her a letter. It was from her grandma. She opened it quickly. It said, To my Yun Hei, I hope you're enjoying your new school and new friends. Be sure to help your mother and your little brother. Here the moon is up, but there the sun is up. No matter how far apart we are, and no matter how different America is from Korea, you'll always be my Yun Hei. Your grandma forever. Yun Hei took out her wooden stamp and filled the paper with it. She thought for a long time in front of the bathroom mirror. On Saturday, Yun Hei walked up to Mr. Kim's store. Mr. Kim was helping a customer, but he looked up and greeted her. Hi, Yun Hei. Hello, Mr. Kim, Yun Hei replied. She felt as if she was back in her old neighborhood in Korea. Hey, said the customer, turning around. It was Joey. Your name is Eun Hee? He asked her with his eyes open wide. Yoon Hae looked quickly at Mr. Kim and then turned to Joey. She nodded slowly. Yes, it's pronounced Yoon Hee. Yoon Hae, sorry. And it means grace, Mr. Kim added. Yoon Hae, Joey said slowly and this time perfectly. It made Yoon Hae smile. I'll have it ready for you tomorrow, said Mr. Kim to Joey. Thank you, Mr. Kim. See you Monday, Yoon Hae, Joey said to her. He left before she could ask him why he was at the store. On Monday, Yoon Hae came to class early to look at the names one last time, but the jar wasn't on her desk. Instead, there was just a single piece of paper, paper with a name on it. Yoon Hae slipped it in her pocket. Where is your name jar? Ralph asked as soon as he saw it was gone. I don't know, Yoon Hae said. It wasn't on Mr. Kokokto's desk or any other desks, and it wasn't on the counters of any of the shelves. As other kids arrived, they helped look. Soon, Mr. Kokoptos came in and Ralph shouted at him, The name jar is gone, the jar with the names in it. Gone? Mr. Kokoptos replied. With a look of concern, he asked Yoon Hae, Did you get a chance to read all the names? Yoon Hae nodded. She took a breath. I'm ready to introduce myself, she said. Yoon Hae wrote her name in both English and Korean on the chalkboard. I liked the beautiful names and funny names you thought of for me, she told the class, but I realized I like my name the best, so I chose it again. Korean names mean something. Yoon Hae means grace. Grace, grace, in high, shouted Ralph. Everyone tried to say it. Yoon Hae. Un Yi Un Hei. Yun He said her name again slowly and clearly. Soon the kids began to say it better. Even Mr. Kokoktos. They applauded Yun He's choice. I was named after a flower, Rosie, whis Rosie whispered to Yun He. Lots of American names have meanings too, Mr. Kokoktos reminded everyone. When class was dismissed, Yoon Hae heard her new friend say goodbye. Bye, Yoon Hae. See you tomorrow. Goodbye, Yoon Hae. Yoon Hae said goodbye and then looked around for Joey. 
but he was already gone. Yunhei, Yunhei, come downstairs. Mother called up to Yunhei, your friend is here. Yunhei rushed down to see who she meant. There stood Joey, and in his arms was the name jar. Where did you find it? Yunhei asked breathlessly. Joey looked embarrassed. Um, well, I took it, but only because I wanted you to keep your own name, and you did. He reached in and pulled out the names. Do you want to keep them? He asked. Thank you, I'll keep them as a souvenir, Yunhei said happily. Then she pulled out the piece of paper from her pocket. Do you want this back? Joey grinned. You can keep it. I'll return the name jar to the class. Maybe you could put some Korean nicknames in it for us. Names with good meanings. I could do that, agreed Yunhei. I've already got a Korean nickname, Joey said. Mr. Kim helped me choose it. Carefully, he pulled out a small silver felt pouch from his pocket. Then he took out a dark wooden stamp with beautiful Korean characters carved sharply in it. He pressed it on the ink pad and then on the piece of paper next to her name. Chin Ku, read Yoon Hae. That means friend. And Chin Ku smiled back. Today you were thinking about these questions as we were reading. I wonder if anyone will say her name right. Why did the kids in her class make a name jar? Will Yoon Hae pick a new name from the name jar? Will Yoon Hae decide to keep her Korean name? Let's think about each of these questions just one at a time now. I'm going to read the question and then give you some think time. And then I'm going to share my thinking with you. If you have someone watching this lesson with you, please tell that person your ideas and listen to them share their ideas with you. Feel free to push the pause button so you have plenty of time to share your thinking. Here's our first question. I wonder if anyone will say her name right. When I think about this question, I think, yes, at the end of the story, some of her friends were able to say Yoon Hae's name correctly. But I don't think it's enough to answer the question to just say yes. I should also explain why the kids in the story could finally say her name correctly. The kids in the story in her class could finally say her name correctly because after Yoon Hae decided to choose and keep her Korean name, she was really patient and she taught her classmates how to say her name correctly. So, yes, Yoon Hae's uh, friends could say her name correctly because Yoon Hae taught them how to say it. Let's think about the next question. Why did the kids in her class make a name jar? When you thought about the answer to this question, did you find the answer right there? I didn't. Instead, I found some clues that helped me. When I read this first part, I noticed that the kids are really curious and kind of worried about Yoon Hae that she didn't have her own name or didn't have a name that she wanted to use. And then when I read this part, I noticed that the names that the kids put into the name jar were names that were special to them, like the nickname of their little sister or a book the name that they got from a storybook that they liked. That helped me figure out that Yoon Hae's classmates made her the name jar because they were concerned about her and they wanted to help her figure out uh, an American name that was special to her and that she would like. I had to use the clues in the book to figure that out. 
Now I'd like to look at our last two questions. We ask these questions at different parts of the story. The third question was, will Yun He pick a new name from the name jar? And the last question here is, will Yun He decide to keep her Korean name? These two questions really go together, don't they? When we wrote the first question, we wrote it way back here on page eight. At this part of the story, Yoon Hae wasn't even considering keeping her Korean name. She was sure she needed an American name. But then, as we kept reading, we wrote the second question toward the end of the story, after Yoon Hae got the letter from her grandmother and was starting to think that maybe she did want to keep her Korean name after all. So I think we can link those two questions together. The page that really helped me answer the questions of what name will she pick and will she keep her Korean name is at the very end of the story when Yoon Hae is talking to her class and explaining her name. Listen for the clues that you might hear. Yoon Hae wrote her name both in English and in Korean on the chalkboard. I like the beautiful names and funny names you thought of for me, she told the class, but I realized I liked my name best, so I chose it again. Korean names mean something. Yoon Hae means grace. When I read that part, it told me that Yoon Hae liked her name the best. She liked that it had the meaning of grace. Uh, and she wanted to make sure that she was still part uh, and remembering um, where she came from and that she was Korean. I want to thank you for thinking about the questions uh, that were some deeper questions about the name jar today. I want to remind you that when readers wonder and ask questions and look for clues that help them answer the questions in the text, it helps them to remember and think more deeply about what they are learning and reading. Now it's time for IDR. Remember, when you are reading as second and third graders, you should be reading for at least 20 to 25 minutes every day. Today, as you are reading, you're going to continue to independently practice your strategy of questioning. As you're reading, please notice what you are wondering or what questions you're asking yourself. And then as you continue to read, please notice if some of your wonderings or questions are explained. If you have somebody who is reading next to you, or when you finish your IDR time, if you can find someone and share with them how your wondering was explained, please do that today. Also, please remember that you can write down your wonderings both in your learning packet or on a piece of paper. When we think about what we are wondering, it helps us to think more deeply and be more active when we are reading. I'd like to model with this for you uh, using my IDR book of Dragons in the Bay. In our last lesson, I shared with you that I was wondering how Jax was going to, or who Jax was going to get to help him get Ma, who got stranded back with the dinosaurs back in time. He's only a kid, so I was curious, who can he get to help him, and how are they going to save the Ma? I kept reading, and I was able to answer part of one of my questions. See if you can hear it too. He's talking on the phone with his friend Vic. At the same time, another character, Ambrose, is also trying to get help. I move a few feet away and say, I'm on at Prospect Park, Vic. Can you come out? I really need your help, like now. Vic doesn't say anything, and for a moment, I worry he's going to turn me down. Then I realize that Vic's got his hand over the phone so I can't hear the conversation he's having with someone else. I could probably sneak out before dinner, but my little sister says she'll tell on me unless I bring her along. Is that okay? 
What we need right now is a grown-up, not a little kid. But Ambrose is still laughing into his phone, so that must mean he's got another adult lined up to take Ma's place. After reading that section, I have part of one of my wonderings explained. I was wondering, yes, in my last reading, uh, who uh, Jax was going to get to be able to help him. He's called his friend Vic, who's another kid, uh, and somehow he thinks Vic is going to be able to help him rescue Ma. Also, I read that Ambrose is talking to an adult who's going to come help. But now I've got another wondering. I'm curious, what adult is Ambrose going to talk into helping Jax, who will believe that Ma's even stuck back in dinosaur times? So as I kept reading, I answered one of my wonderings, but even that answer made me curious about something else. Today, as you read for your 25 minutes, please notice what you are wondering and if those wonderings are explained. Try to find someone to tell uh, your wonderings to and any findings that you have. Happy reading, and I'll see you next week. 